Section 4 of The Sins of Hollywood by Ed Roberts. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. How the Great Letty Played Her Cards. Letty had aspirations to be somebody. Early in life, she learned that if a girl cannot be good, she must be fairly careful. This grew to be her motto. Born in a western state where men see fit to provide for more than one wife, brought up among these strange surroundings, the girl had talent in more ways than one. She learned to play the piano at first, then she took up the violin. When fifteen years of age, she sought and obtained a position playing for dances with an orchestra. Thus, she was able to purchase the baubles and dresses which appealed to her as the greatest possessions a girl could acquire. But Letty was young then, only fifteen. She is older now, and wiser, much wiser. The past has a baleful look to her, a saddened, chastened look. A forbidding memory haunts her, taunts her. And this is the story. Growing into a fairly pretty girl, who knew how to wear clothes, a winsome expression, an innocent face, with a simulated poise that was always on tap, Letty heard of the movies. She had played in a theater where pictures were shown. The lure of the silent drama called to her in such determined tones that she forsook her violin in the land of many wives and hastened to Hollywood. Letty found that the job of extra girl brings little remuneration. Unless, well, Letty didn't know the ropes. Then, it was an assistant director who first taught her the things she wanted to know. Assistant directors are sometimes wonderful artists at teaching young girls many things, many tricks of the movie profession. By the time the assistant director had shown Letty how she could be successful as an actress, she was granted an opportunity to give her education a test. The assistant had found a blonde who looked particularly good. To him, anyway. He was finished with Letty. As a bathing girl, Letty got her first part. The director of comedies merely wanted to see if she could screen in a bathing costume. He said... He looked her over in the privacy of his office. The bathing suit was particularly daring, even for the movies. The director approved of her form, and in comedies, he was one of the big directors. That was Letty's cue. She is a bright girl, is Letty. Some girls would have started right in to vamp the great director, who, incidentally, is part owner of the studio where he directs. Not so Letty. Letty had been schooled by an assistant director. She had learned all about the fine art of yesing. Vamping is old. True. She displayed her physical charms as best she could, as much as she dared. Not too much, just enough. She had been an apt pupil. So Letty did bits and atmosphere, as a bathing girl. But this did not last long. Letty came to life when she thought the time was ripe. She had showed a decided interest in the great comedy director, she patted him on the cheek. She leaned against him when she conversed with him. 
she tantalized him and walked away. Letty had learned a great deal more than some of the other girls. They had not all been schooled by an assistant director. Soon the great director was seen out with Letty at a few of the roadhouses at Venice, Playa del Rey, Beverly Glen. Letty and the great director often exchanged knowing looks on the lot, and with the passing of each day, Letty kept getting wiser. She was wise enough not to tax the great director too much. She needed clothes and other things. There was a certain shoe merchant in Los Angeles. He liked movie girls. Letty saw to it that she was the particular movie girl he liked. Letty was nice to her director and nice to the shoe merchant. But each had his place in her scheme for the future. The former was to be her stepping stone. The latter supplied the wherewithal to keep her dressed for the part. Until, well, one day his wife went to the department store and got the wrong bill. It amounted to over five hundred. Letty had to be more careful after that, but not less ambitious. There was heralded throughout Hollywood one day the news that a wonderful director was coming to town, a master builder. Letty read the news with avidity. She began to plan. She had sense enough to know that, as a comedian, she never would arrive. No girl ever amounted to anything in comedies. Uh, they were good enough to rub off the rough spots. Uh, but that was all. She must have a chance at drama. She had tried innumerable times, when the great comedy director did not know it, to get even a bit in the big pictures. But always she had been turned away. So she decided to use her wit and her physical charm. Patiently she waited till one evening the opportunity came when she could meet the Great One, the wonderful director of Master Pictures. The introduction was simple and brief. To Letty, it was an event upon which she determined to capitalize. The Great One gave her but a passing notice, but Letty was patient as ever. She bided her good time. There was but another step. The Great One needed a girl to play the role of a woman member of a gang of thieves. With the aid of a booking agent, she succeeded in selling herself, her services, to the Great One for this big masterpiece, a picture that had been called the equal of anything Griffith ever produced. Letty's work made an impression. She knew how to be hard, to play the embittered woman. She was wise, but it had cost something, and the hardness in the picture was not all acting. By degrees she began to appear at places the Great One frequented, just as if by accident. By the same slow process, she practiced the while she had learned from her two teachers, the assistant director and the great director, and soon she began to see progress. Slowly, but nonetheless surely, she broke down the great one's reserve, and then, step by step, she builded the foundation for her success. She intrigued the great one. Without shame, she permitted him to come to her in the great silences of the whispering night, and in the pink-tinted hours of the dawn she bade him be gone, lest someone learn of their illicit love. Then she twisted her mouth 
and to herself she smiled a smile of cynicism and scorn. She had won over the Great One in spite of himself. Later, she told him many things, and he believed her. She had not realized all her ambitions yet. She needed him. At a cafe in New York, he agreed to provide the funds for her own company. Her triumph was complete. She had her publicity man call in all her bathing girl pictures of the earlier days. The publisher of a motion picture trade paper agreed to get a release for her pictures. It cost her only a smile to secure this service without pay. The publisher and the Great One were friends of long standing. The publisher had helped make the Great One great. And it had paid well. Mystery surrounded the formation of the company. Letty paid all the bills at the studio. Her name appeared on the paychecks. Hollywood suspected, but did not know. The Great One was involved in lawsuits over his big picture, and his name must not appear. The Great One chose an air of mystery. Well and good. Hollywood was used to mysteries, none of which were really mysterious to Hollywood at all. But Letty had started something. She had succeeded in making a slave of the Great One. She had won him from his relatives, his friends, and his backers. She had made of him a servant who answered her every whim. He lived only for her. It was strange, too. For here was a brilliant man, a man with a reputation for big things, a scholar, a gentleman, a connoisseur. Yet he was a veritable groveling slave to Letty, an uneducated, unrefined, mongrel type of Middle Western girl. But it was all true and sad. Now there was a handsome young chap, an actor of a class, who frequented the lot the young son of a famous theatrical father. He looked good to Letty, did Waldo. He was clean-cut, husky, clever, and a good dresser. Better looking by far than her great one. And younger. Why, he had no gray hairs at all. So Letty fell really in love. Or at least... She thought it was love. Anyway, Waldo appealed to her in a different way than did the great one. She began to cultivate Waldo, the young one. And Waldo appeared to like Letty. Perhaps he was flattered. For Letty was now a star. The newspaper clipping said so. For the great one maintained a fine staff of press agents for the express purpose of exploiting Letty. Soon, Waldo and Letty began to go about the roadhouses together, to appear at public places in each other's company. He was always by her side at the studio. Indeed, it soon became noised about that the young couple were engaged, and neither one of them took the trouble to deny it. Even the press agents failed to capitalize upon the choice bit of material. The Great One called Letty into his office. What is this I hear about you and young Waldo? He wondered, as if afraid to learn the answer. Search me, replied Letty flippantly. I haven't the slightest idea what you have heard. It isn't true, is it, Letty? You are not going to marry him and leave me, are you, Letty dear? Ah, <laughs> what's the matter with you again? burst out the girl. You always manage to think up something to razz me about. 
What's eating you, anyhow? Haven't I got a right to do as I damn please? Who the hell do you think you are, anyway? King of Ireland or something? And she walked away from him. Had she looked back, she might have seen the Great One drop his head in his hands as he settled back into his chair. The Great One was very, very tired. Letty's picture was finished and released. It was regarded as a good one. The Great One was given little time to rest. In order to hold the girl, he supervised another picture, and his assistant completed it. This picture, of course, starred Letty. It was not such a wonderful picture, mediocre in fact, but the publicity brought about by the success of the masterpiece made of Letty a well-known actress. It made her famous, and her name carried the second photo play past the booking offices and into the projection rooms of the theaters throughout the land. By this time, Letty was flaunting the Great One openly. She turned from him, head uplifted, eyes straight ahead. But she had succeeded only too well in her efforts to drive the Great One from her. Indeed, she had broken his heart. He took to his bed and for many weeks lay there, paying no attention to anyone. Apparently, he did not want to get well. Before his death, the company which he had formed for the purpose of starring Letty went into the discard. But Letty was made. The death of her benefactor brought about the solution of her problem, a problem she had been trying to solve for several months. The problem was how to become the biggest star for one of the biggest companies in the business. For immediately, one of the biggest directors sent for her. Letty knows men. She had clothes now, and a name. She wore her clothes well. They displayed just enough of her physical charms to attract the big director. Also, she knows just how much to say and how much to hint. Letty is a very intelligent girl, along certain lines. Today, Letty is listed among the stars. Every day she climbs higher. Her position appears to be secure. Her escapades seem to be confined to playing a quiet game with those who can do her the most good. End of section four.